Okay, as a side note before we get going, for the most part, if you're in accelerated algebra 2 and you're at a C minus or below, it's recommended here at quarter time that you switch to regular algebra 2. Okay, so now we'll get on to dealing with square root functions and graphing square root functions and graphing inequalities. Now remember, whatever's inside of your root can't be negative. So what's inside your root has to be greater than or equal to zero. So we're going to take what's inside of our root, set it to be greater than or equal to zero. If we solve that, that's going to tell us what numbers we can put in, which would be our domain. So we'll go ahead and add one to both sides, multiply both sides by two thirds, or you can divide it both sides by three halves. But remember, dividing by a fraction is multiplying by the reciprocal. That's your domain. Your range is what you get out. Now here we're getting out, there's no plus or minus in front of your root. So we know we're getting out positive. So we're not getting out negatives. If you're not getting out negatives, that means you're greater than or equal to zero. So looking at your axes here, if we are looking at a graph, if you're looking at your x-intercept where you're crossing the x-axis, that means you're not up and down at all. That means your y value is zero. So if I come up here and plug in zero for y, all I'd have to do is go ahead and solve this. So now to solve this, I could square both sides. Then I would go ahead and add one to both sides. And then I get rid of that times by 3 halves, so I would divide by 3 halves or multiply by 2 thirds, and I get 2 thirds. Now, if I'm looking for my y-intercept, my y-intercept is where I cross my y-axis, so I'm not left and right at all, so that means my x is 0. So all I'm going to do is go here, plug in 0 for x to figure out my y. If I plug in 0 for x, it doesn't work because remember our domain said we had to start at greater than or equal to zero i mean sorry greater than or equal to two-thirds our x being zero for your y intercept is not in that domain so there is no y intercept now you could have tried to work it out by plugging in zero and you get the square root of negative 1. Square root of negative 1 will not show up on your xy coordinate system. So see if you can go ahead and find all that for our second problem here. Once again, your domain, whatever's inside, can't be negative. So what's inside has to be greater than, what's inside your root has to be greater than or equal to 0. All we have to do is solve that by subtracting 2 from both sides, get rid of the 2 in front by dividing by 2. So our domain is greater than or equal to negative 1. Your range, well, when I look at this part right here, it's a positive in front, so I know this is going to be greater than or equal to 0 because it's not negative. But if this is greater than or equal to 0, and then I come over here and I add 3, that means it would be greater than or equal to 3 find your x-intercept. Once again, your x-intercept is when your y value is 0. So plug in 0 right here and solve that. We get this. Then we could get rid of that plus 3 by subtracting 3. Then we could square both sides. Then we could go ahead and uh, subtract your 2 to get this. Then to get rid of that timesing by 2, we would get this here, which is 3 and a half. Now remember that when you are solving radical equations and you end up squaring both sides, you actually need to check your answer into the original to see if it would work. So if you were to plug 7 over 2 or 3.5 in here to work it out, it would not actually give you 0. It would end up giving you a 6 is equal to 0, which doesn't work, so that's why it's no solution. So you may have to go ahead and check your answers like that. Your y-intercept, once again, is 
when your x is zero. So all we have to do is come up here and plug in zero for x. Now, that we know it makes sense because we're trying to plug in zero. Our domain was anything greater than negative one, which that is. So we just plug in zero here. We get the square root of zero plus two or the square root of two plus our three. So we get our y-intercept to be this. So let's go ahead and try to graph this inequality. If it was a greater than or equal to, we know it would be a solid curve. If it's just a greater than, we know it would be a dotted curve. Similarly, for less than or equal to, it would be solid. If it's just a less than, it would be dotted. If it was an equal to, we know we wouldn't be shading. We'd just have a curve. First thing I want to do is find my domain. So remember, whatever's inside my root can't be negative. So what's inside of my root has to be greater than or equal to zero. That allows me to find my domain. I need to know what my domain is so that I know what values to use in my table. And in this case, I get greater than or equal to negative 5 thirds. So I'm going to start out at negative 5 thirds. And then I'm going to just choose nice normal numbers that are greater than that because we got to be greater than or equal to that. And so then all I'm going to do is make myself my table. I could either plug these in by hand or use my calculator putting this into my y equals. Now for the sake of graphing, these decimals actually do go on forever. But when I'm graphing stuff, the most accurate I can get is probably to the nearest tenth. So there's no need to go to the nearest hundredth or thousandth when you're making your table because you're actually plotting points and you can't get real accurate. So if we go ahead and plot these points, we're going to have this. We know it's going to be dotted because there's no equal to. We have y that's greater than that. So we want to shade where the y's are greater than our curve we're just putting in, which is straight up and down here. Now notice your shading only comes over to here. Your domain is x is greater than or equal to negative 5 thirds. So we got to start at x being negative 5 thirds only go to the right. So your shading has to stop at the edge of your domain. A second way you could have went and figured out how you're shading is to choose a point that's not on your curve, like the origin. Plug in 0 for x, 0 for y to see if it's true or false. In this case, it ends up being false. So if you tried this point and it doesn't work, that means you've got to be shading on the other side of your curve. See if you can do this last problem by yourself and then watch the video. So once again, find your domain, take what's inside of your root greater than or equal to zero. Solve it by subtracting four, multiplying both sides by two thirds. That's your domain, make your table starting at negative 8 thirds and going up from there because it's greater than. If it was less than, you'd start there and go backwards. And then plug those values in, write down your answers. So plug that into your y equals, do your table, plot your points. Now, because this is a less than or equal to, we know it's going to be a solid curve. y is less than. That means we should be shading below because those are where the y values are less than. Also, if you wanted, you could have decided to plug in the point zero, 0, If you plugged in the point zero, 0, you get 0 is less than, in this case, 2, which is a true statement. You chose a point on this side, it worked, so you're going to shade on that side. Also, notice your shading stops right here at the edge of your graph. It does not continue to your left. 